Yo, what's up, everybody? We are back yet again. It's Wally yep. and Russ. I don't know it's what y'all want to call us. Y'all going to figure that out. Y'all going to figure that out. How you doing today, Miss Wally? I'm doing great. Glad to be here. We're glad, glad to have you. It's, it's good, good to be, to be back. back. This, this is, is a show, show what we call the Good, the good Life Project, Project, Life with the Y. And this is going to be about everything involved in life. The beginning of life. The fun parts, the messy parts, the scary parts, and then the cultivation. You being able to look back and have a legacy. So today we're going to dive right in. I like to get straight to the healing. I don't like wasting too much time. So today we're talking about releasing, allowing things to part from us, allowing things to miss us and avoid us, allowing things to reject us, and then seeing how we feel. How, How do you deal with those things? Uh, so like I have a, I mean, I I got many things that I've worked on recently that just kind of give me the tools to continue to go and releasing is one of those things. Like, and I think it's like, for me, when you get into a situation is, it's right in front of you, you have to face it. Right. So I was forced to really be like, man, I'm dealing with similar situations. So like, it has to be something with me. Mm-hmm. Like, and they always talk about baggage, but I didn't really feel like, I didn't know the process of releasing. I, I didn't know that I was like, still feeding and giving energy into things, right? So yeah. that was the thing. It's like, I was still, I was dealing with things head on, but they were the same situation. And it was when I was like, wow, I. I'm carrying these, I'm carrying energy of people, situations. Like I'm still feeding into it. I'm still giving it life. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm still allowing it to breathe and live in my future. And um, I think some of the things that um, listening to your elders is really helpful. Like having conversations with them about things that you're going with can help you sometimes learn how to release and let go. I agree. So getting more in tune with everything is what I'm hearing. For sure. That's a beautiful place to start. And I think sometimes that's where we find ourselves disconnected from everything. And And it's hard to understand how you got here when you didn't, you didn't want to be here. (laughs) This is not where you were trying to go. Listen, (laughs) we got derailed several times because of people fears, right? We were raised a certain way. We're cultivated, we're guided a certain way, whether it's school, university, your job, within your household, your family, your culture, you're guided a certain way based on people's fears, right? They kind of shaped us into these morals and values Mm -hmm. and they poured into us, you know, love and some other things too, but that shaped our being as a person, as a human, as as an individual. Mm -hmm. And then... We may have added some things like, oh, I like this and that and the other, but still the thought the process thought came, process from, came from, from, you know, you got tapped you know, on your hand you and you that was something that was inappropriate. So, inappropriate. so naturally the mindset, naturally the mindset hey, if I do this again, I'm going to get this tap. This so, tap. You, so you force yourself, force yourself naturally, naturally you wanted to touch things, right? You wanted to explore. You wanted to whatever. But somebody's fear of however they couldn't explain or interpret this thing to you, you know, now I'm forever, forever you like, like I'm, I'm, I'm afraid of this or I'm afraid of that because you got your Then <laughs> mm-hmm. it, it makes you put this front up. It makes you create, create these walls that are now in your life. Right. But the thing that's going to set you free is bursting through those walls. You know what I mean? And it won't always go that way. But you have to learn the courage. You have to learn how to be brave. And that's when you're in the face of adversity, it's not when it's calm days and calm waters. That's when it's a hurricane and it's your first hurricane. <laughs> so I think for me, I had to learn to love my first. I'm very sacred with things. I, I'll, I'll wait to do something, even if it's going to take me 10 years, because I need the timing to be right. Because I want to create the memory. I want to remember not just this lesson, but how I felt. Mm-hmm. I want to remember what was happening around me, what things smelled like, what things sounded like. And I think that is the presence of being 
a part of everything around you. And sometimes we're selfish. We're in the moment because, ooh, it's going to make me feel better. Or, ooh, this is going to come with more opportunity or it's, it's going to taste good. good. You feel mm. what I'm saying? But we're not thinking of the happiness of the baker. You're not thinking of the empty stomach growling of the homeless person that lives outside the bakery. You ain't thinking about the birds. Like, ooh, I hope they drop a fruit crumbs. Like, ooh, <laughs> you feel me? You got to connect with everyone in this moment and not just what's happening to you. And I think we'll find ourselves answering a lot of these questions that are unanswered in our lives. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You dig? I had to get out of that. I had to get out of the bucket list. One day I was just like, just start doing the stuff. Why you got to yeah, wait till you're 60 what? to scratch off something? Go, yeah. do, go do it now. I don't know why <laughs> I'm so offended by the term. Like, we, like, really pick up a lot of terms where we'll just start saying shit. Yeah. And I hear people, oh, yeah, somebody buy your land. Like, okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> I want, like, okay, so do people understand, like, the bucket list, bucket list mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Originated, originated from, from people, people kicking, kicking the bucket, the bucket committing, committing suicide. suicide. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That makes so much sense. Like, <laughs> you're standing on the bucket. Yeah. You then hung yourself up here. And you're kicking the bucket. So you want to complete all these things before you kick the bucket. Before you kick your bucket. <laughs> Silliness. Like we just sounds insane when you put it that way. Right. And it's like, but then and somebody will look at me like, so this is why people look at me crazy because I yeah. say shit like this. But this is the truth of the matter. And that's one of the things about releasing, right? Like it's um, it's, it's okay, okay to accept the truth and it's just that and there's no mm -hmm. negativity attached to it like I'm not sharing truth because I want to be negative right and people somehow take it negative like it's like no if I say I love you to life why are you mad because I don't say I love you to death right did you get mad did you say grand rising yeah, it's like tell me how hard life's going. <laughs> <laughs> tell me, tell me who hurt you in a simple sentence. <laughs> One gesture. I don't like that y'all be saying kings and queens. Like, what? Why does that? Why, why does that threaten you? Yeah, like, what's like, so, what's so, so wrong with so someone wrong with seeing themselves at that level? level? And I think, and I think that what, like, that's, that's another, another thing about releasing. Like, right? you, you got so, so much that's going, that's going on here. here. You'll, you'll find, find it in how you treat other people. Simple as. Me saying I love you to life and somebody scrunching their face up at me like <sighs> or or if I'm like, no, don't love me to death. Don't I don't want you to love me to your death. Okay. Like we don't let's 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 leave death out of it. Like yeah. it is a part of life. But let's just continue having life because life in life is so many grand things. There's joy. And not saying that death isn't because they're one and the same. They're still connected. But you shouldn't be in a rush to get to death. Yeah. It's gonna happen. Yeah. Don't worry. That whole, thing, get there. <laughs> <laughs> that whole thing with uh i think i spoke about this before where like i can remember being in church and being so full of this word and what was going on with my life there that i really was like can you just fulfill the promise and come back now? Cause like, mm -hmm. I don't want to deal with all this other shit. Like I'm not trying to deal with real life. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing. Like whenever you're trying to escape real life, it's just being accountable to certain things. Like we don't have to, first of all, you never have to run away from anything because all the things that you're imagining, it's like, remember when you was in school and somebody knew something about someone and they was like the talk of, whatever yeah. for however long it could yeah. have been like anything oh she got caught sucking or they got caught doing whatever Smoking or whatever, whatever. Yeah. Anything, anything embarrassing, embarrassing that happened, that happened in, grade in grade school can still can continue, still continue in our adult life when we don't, don't live the truth. truth you'll, you'll have, have more, more moments like that like, like you did in your youth when you not live in the truth and then sometimes it'll just be only you knowing about it like it'll just be your own personal like prison uh like attack on yourself because mm -hmm. you created this narrative like oh i have to live this way i have to be my hair have to be a certain type of way my makeup got to be a certain type of way my weight my everything got to be mm -hmm. based within the norms of society right mm -hmm. so we creating this shit right but now once you figure out who you are and who you're showing up in the world to be you'll be able to release certain things that don't serve you or you sh like that's the process the process will be able to do that because it's freeing it's dead weight 
to carry on narratives that's not the truth. Yeah, that's a hundred percent. And we'll go through those bursts in life where we just had that moment of, man, I feel good. And this is why you have to start becoming aware of the pattern because you'll see how it's just the sugar rush. You're building up on all this sugar, you got all this energy and then you plummet and now you feel low and you feel drained. And those days when we're low and drained, we're like, where is this coming from? Pay attention to your pattern. Pay attention to how you move. Pay attention to your day. Pay attention to anything you put in your mouth. I'm not talking about just food. How that makes you feel. With that, what you do proceeding that. Because when something makes me feel good, I eat something good, I feel empowered. I want to go change the world. Hey. When I eat something crappy, I don't want to move. I don't want to do anything. I just want to sit here and regret why I ate this thing. <laughs> you feel me? Like it, it sends you down a path of being stagnant. It creates that procrastination in your life. Everything, Everything is a reaction. reaction. It's, it's just, just a reaction, reaction to something else that's happening. So you got to identify the roots in your life. And the easiest way to get there to me is emotion. So sometimes it's easy to get lost in your emotion. You just start feeling a bunch of ways about a bunch of different things. So then the road to mastery is through discipline. If you want to master anything you're trying to do, you have to be more disciplined in that, in that study, in that experiment, in that experience. And everything around us is just a test. How you talk to your kids will lead to how you talk to your relationship. What you allow your boss to do to you will allow what you allow your oppressors to do to you. It all is hand to hand. This is so true. This is so true. And and so like it's I mean, I, I can only speak from my personal experience as far as the talking to the kids thing because you know, I got a twenty-three year old. And so we've had plenty of conversations about how to still talk to children on their level and and not disrespect them at the same time yeah because once you're disrespecting your children you ultimately are disrespecting yourself and mm -hmm. um, my ex-husband used to say something like oh you're just like a pushover and you're like this you know you have this hands-off approach like yes i don't feel like you have, i have to be like for me it tears away from me to put my hands on my children like yeah. it does something to me and that switch came a long time ago like a long time ago that switch came but I haven't always acted on it because I'm so used to popping and, yeah. you know, disciplining in a certain way. So I really had to learn how to, like, why am I so mad anyway? Mm -hmm. They are little people. Like, they only been here for so many years. It's that simple. Like, literally, they've only been here on Earth for however many years they're, they're old. And we don't get, we don't, like, look at that. It's, we don't take that into account. And then we don't take into account that they're sponges. Mm -hmm. So all the things that we're learning to release it, to better ourselves and any other, they're still picking up. And you can't hide anything because they're more spiritual than you are um, in terms of being close to just truth and feel like they can feel on the inside what's good and what's, what's not good. Mm -hmm. More so than we can. More we're so really, really like we're really down like brain down with the brain. We are, are unlearning. Are unlearning. They have learned. They less, have learned less. Even though they, even though they still learn, they learn. They learn, learn less, less of, of, of um, the, the manipulations and the like the norms and shit of the world. The things that control us. The things that we're like, oh, I got to do this and that and the other. You know that moves us. I got to celebrate Thanksgiving. I got to celebrate. You know, for, I got to celebrate these things. They're not into that shit yet. They're pushing. We're pushing these ideologies onto them, right? Mm -hmm. We're pushing school. We're pushing the pledge of allegiance. We're pushing just a lot of things that their their the spirits, spirits are just, just ain't as tainted, tainted as ours. Mm -hmm. And so, as we're releasing, we have to also take in kind of um, like get when you're giving yourself grace, you also also have to give grace when it comes to raising children yeah. because again like you said earlier we ain't had to be here i don't know the conversation of getting here yeah <laughs> i know a little bit like i've met some people that's told me that they can remember actually coming mm -hmm. like how where they were before this one guy met um he was a twin and he was in the back of my uber right so mm -hmm. he's like uh they were wherever they were they were given this mission that they was going to come here and if they if they didn't have um if they didn't complete their mission they was going to be stuck here for like thousands of years or something like that mm -hmm. which is really crazy so he said he can remember that they were speaking a different language but he remember it in english mm -hmm. yeah the orders was given in a different language he said but they was 
he can remember it in English, but he said he can remember coming through this tube, like with different colors. And he remembered that his twin was with him coming through the tube. And yeah, so it was like, wow, okay. So I said, he's telling me, he said he was on a mission and assignment. Thank you for letting me know, um, Mr. Twin. Right. <laughs> Man, I, and I, no, no, how I, you, when, when we, we start, start to, to put things, things that eloquently in it, it paints that detail the picture, we can really start to understand what we're doing. And when we first come to this realm, we're still of the frequency of where we came from. So as we're being convinced mm -hmm. to be on this frequency, you get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That's what separates our path in life. You either become the conformant or you become the rebel. You become the one saying, no, I'm I'm fine where I'm at. <laughs> or you become the one like, yeah, this energy is what we need. We should have never had that old energy we came here with. Change it. And that's duality. There has to be both sides. Because if you only have one side, it's unbalanced. It's going to tilt in that side's favor. Right. Balance means it's going to even out over time. You know what I mean? So now we have we learn to stop being so upset. When we find out people are different than us, stop being so upset when we find out people are stuck in their ways. It's funny the th the terms we should be using for love and healing we they've demonized, and now we only use to weaponize ourselves against each other. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And a lot of these phrases, like I was literally just having this conversation earlier on the phone, and it was about um, something Cat Williams said and Farrakhan said it too. But they said the liar knows the, the lie, lie that, that they told. told. So if the liar is telling you the medicine is at B, but they're focused on A, you need to be focusing on A because they know the misdirection. Hmm. There's no way you can fail a test completely without knowing the right answers because probability is say even if you're guessing, you're going to get one or two right. Right. But if you get every single answer wrong, that means you knew all the right answers. You misdirected. That's hmm. the only way you can intentionally miss. So you can, I tell my kids this all the time, like you can play dumb, you cannot play smart. You have to actually be <laughs> smart, <laughs> but you can play dumb. You can act like you don't know any better. You can act like you don't know the answers. Right. So discernment starts to teach you, there's times where you need to play dumb. I've been in these loan offices and these apartment buildings playing very dumb. Yeah, 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 exactly. You hear what I'm saying? Exactly. I was in yeah. church playing very dumb. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, and you know, I was, <laughs> Church, but I definitely would say that. As an adult, as a kid, I wasn't. I was in. As an adult, yeah. No, no, no. I wasn't playing. No, no, I wasn't. I wasn't playing dumb, but I definitely would say that. It hit me afterwards. Like, it hit me afterwards. Like, what's going on? This whole time, I'm this whole time. I'm like, exactly. Like, like, we talk about we talk about the damn eyes, and I'm. I guess for I guess me, for me it, it, it was it was it was awesome, it was awesome to, go to go back and, and see, see the energy that I was, that I was putting, putting in and just what was happening around, around me, right? right? Mm -hmm. Because my well, I ain't gonna call her my friend because she actually owed me money and this she wanted girl. to see this person. She was giving my money. We got cash out. Listen, and it's still the same. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, shit changed. Listen, but no, she. Uh, <laughs> Something about wool over your eyes. Oh, she said, um, "You was such a good, like a real Christian." Mm. And it made me think about all of the scandals that I had witnessed while I was there, right in front of my face, like just. But still kind of blindly because you thinking the good of people. You thinking yeah. like, no, y'all Christians, y'all in the church. Y'all supposed to be good. Y'all bad, safe, sanctified, and all this other shit. Y'all up here praising and worship. Y'all doing all this other shit. But y'all really have deep, darker things going on like the rest of us. And you got to do some healing. And coming and shooting hot and hooping and hollering and listening to the word. It's not going to cleanse you of the shit you still you you basically what they call it um, you repenting and you go back the next day do because you only you taught to repent yeah. you taught that I could repent I can just you know do this shit and be like okay you know when I really want to give my life over to the Lord mm -hmm. I'll be there <laughs> I got I'll time so, you know God if know you my, ever come back He know my heart <laughs> I'll be ready. <laughs> God know my heart. And that's the point of the word. The point of the word is put yourself aligned with being ready, not because it's gonna get you into heaven. Not because, you know, when Big Mama get there, she'll be waiting with that slipper at the gate. Like, yeah, I've, I've been waiting for you. Come yeah, on. I heard what you said. I heard 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 you said. I
Rocky, little thief. Come over here. Thief, come over here. <laughs> you know you're going to, if you, you know, know you're going to have to, know, see, that's being in a higher intelligence. You know you're going to have to attest. You know someone's going to be upset. Just do the right thing. Yeah. Just represent them and what you do. Represent yourself and what you do. Already and again, and again, that's the thing. thing like, like, and that's all. And then once, once you do that, that stuff like, like for me, that's that's, that's what, what made me stop celebrating Christmas because it was like, wait a minute, hold on. I went back to my grandmother, okay, and how she got introduced to that, and my mother, my mother telling me how like you know it was such a struggle for her parents to try to provide for all of them and to keep up with this ideology from other people. Mm-hmm. They struggled to keep up with it. So for me, I was like, oh, I struggle to keep up with it. I don't mm-hmm. want to do that shit. Now we really celebrate during Christmas. We is out traveling. We out hiking. We doing shit. We out like really having real, real experiences. experiences. And, it's, and, it's, and, and you know, you know everything. I think they do all of that, but the, the gift, gift is, is making, making memories, memories for the life, life and learning lessons. lessons and something, something that you can actually carry forward. Stuff that money can't buy. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like you can't buy the amount of the quality time and that you can go back and go, oh mom, remember when we did X, Y, and Z, this fun moment. Right. And instead you got like I posted a while ago, you got plenty of children and got shit that's still wrapped up in gifts this or still not even wrapped up, but still like in the box that they came in, not unused. Stuff they don't want. They ain't thinking about. Yeah. And um you definitely can't take it on a hike. So Yeah. <laughs> So that puts you now in a space of healing because you've created a purpose that challenges you being comfortable. Mm -hmm. This is to me the when they say reverse engineering, you dig like this is how we take those things in life. We make these things monumental in how we handle them. You know what I mean? But if you're going through it haphazardly and if you're going through it and your heart ain't in it, even Christmas morning ain't going to be fun. Right. Even they are not gonna be joyful when to open gifts. And you dig what I'm saying? So the the lesson in all of that, what you learn is, is you can have that feeling anywhere. Yes. We anytime. talk about it all the time. It's the difference between a house and a home. Yes, yes, yes. You, dig? Now you can have home anywhere. It's really wherever you go. Like like for me, I you know, if, if I'm comfortable in somebody's house, and you say, "Oh, feel at home." Shit, you gonna catch me sleep somewhere. Oh, you yeah. gonna catch me in a whole nap. You gonna catch me in the kitchen. You know, you say that to be at home. Listen, I ain't gonna like be. You know, nah, but that, but I there's nothing wrong. Home. There's nothing wrong with being like that. Cause to me, that's a love language. That starts to speak towards the dynamic. That's why I don't mind it. And this is see, this is a lesson to where we gotta pay more attention to ourselves. This is where I always used to educate my homies, like. It'd be four of us, we kicking it. They just look at me like, all right, bro, you can stay. The other three, like, all right, y'all, what y'all about to get into? So they get out of there, and I'm just like, why y'all, why y'all still friends? Like, if I feel like that towards somebody and I don't even want them staying in my house, they would never be invited to my house. Wow. If you don't even feel comfortable for them to stay here, why are they here? And they just like, damn, I ain't look at it that way. I yeah. look at everything that way. <laughs> exactly. Because <laughs> I don't ever want to be the one with, you know, cake on my face at, at the birthday party and it ain't my birthday and I'm going hard. I'm in here turn. I'm in here acting like it's my day. Exactly. You feel me? Exactly. I don't never want to be that person. I always want to be the person that can recognize, man, the birthday person ain't got love all year. So if they want to celebrate this year and they just want that attention, you got that. What's going to be three hours, four hours? You got that. What do you want to do? You want to bowl? You want to paint? You want to hike? Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? So now I'm speaking through you through this. That was the point of the holidays for people who really needed that love. Some was money and marketing, but some people actually went, they, they only feel good around the holidays. Exactly. Exactly. So, so that, that's, that's the downfall. downfall. You should be trying to feel good at your round. Yeah, chasing joy, um, <laughs> chasing joy and making joy uh, a part of your day will help you start releasing these other things. Because then it's like, Again, you're going to be faced with whatever is ailing you. You're going to be faced with why am I feeling this way? Mm -hmm. And you're going to have to answer those questions. And once you go down that rabbit hole, it'll help you release things that don't serve you. Like, um, and this was different. Like, okay, so I had a situation where somebody was like, I think it might have been my ex-husband is talking about I was jealous. Like, he was like, you're just a jealous person at the end. And I'm like, no, it's more about the respect, but... Okay. You call it jealousy. Yeah. So I, I, I went through this whole period of working on not being jealous because of something that somebody told me. 
um, and letting go of it and that and the other. And literally it was, it was twofold in there because yes, like I didn't, I, I, I didn't need to be comparing myself to people that way. Mm-hmm. And that helped me in a lot because women, we do that. We naturally, I think not naturally, but I think we're always in a mindset of comparing on accident and then sometimes comparing can come from like we're trying to compliment or Mm. you know stuff like that but then we naturally go comparing and i think certain um forms of uh media kind of plays a part in that not not only social media but like the the videos and reality shows and shit play into the imagery that we see like that we're trying to portray to be these other people and trying to keep mm-hmm. up with this other image that we see mm-hmm. that's being accepted in all these other communities and stuff like that so mm-hmm. um the imagery plays a big part of it but i think once you once you sit with yourself and you like again like i said you're chasing joy because i remember one time i was not feeling well because my hair was like i couldn't get this weave style like i couldn't get in I'm like, man, I gotta have this style. Like, I gotta, you know, I'm spending all this money. I'm doing all this stuff. Like, I'm experimenting. This is before the YouTube YouTube University was teaching everybody how to yeah. how to do quick weaves and everything else. Um, so I'm trying to do what I can do. And let me tell you, I was feeling so miserable. Like, I felt so. I was so enraged. Like, just mad at myself that I could not produce this look and this style that I had seen on television, Mm. that I couldn't recreate it. Um, But I think diving into the natural, you know, the natural hair came out, I was like, what, 2006, 2007, when I finally went natural and stopped doing, I was still doing weaves, but I wasn't doing like relaxers and stuff. Mm -hmm. But um, during that time, it, you know, I was re- slowly releasing, not even knowing that I was releasing that that uh, brainwash or that, that narrative that my hair needed to be straight or my hair needed to be this type of way. I needed to keep up or I needed to have a weave to be whatever the fuck. Yeah. Yeah. To fit in type of. Yeah. I ain't need none of that shit. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. You don't really? need none of that stuff. But I think that's one of the conundrums in life, um, everything you just explained. And I actually would agree in the beginning that it is a natural occurrence. Um, A lot of us are inquisitive. A lot of us are hungry. And we'll do whatever it takes to get to the bottom of some shit or to get (laughs) to the truth. And I find myself judging people when I'm seeing if I can do what they do. And it's harmless to me. But I had to learn through learning how to be socially inept and mm-hmm. socially, you know, comfortable. There's certain things we ask ourselves and there's certain things we can ask the world. So when we have ideas, when we see somebody doing something, we're like, ooh, I can do that. You know what I mean? Like, that's for us. That's for internal. That's because we may need that later. When somebody's doing something and we're just how we get on ourselves to get something done, we don't need to share that with them. That's mm-hmm. for us and later in our space. This is why isolation is so important in the journey. This is why spirituality almost promotes isolation, being on your own, because then we can be our true selves. And your true self is a little spicy. Your true self does have ego. Your true self does say, I knew that. You know what I mean? Like that, because there's nothing wrong with those things. But when you create the variable of a social setting, see that now it's tricky. Now you have problems. It forces you to be one or another one or another people. Mm -hmm. It forces you to be someone who cares about how people feel or someone who could care less about how people feel. And those create two completely different lifestyles. This This is is something I had to learn early on my journey to get far. You do not take giant leaps. It is a million tiny steps. It is step by step. It is brick by brick. You do not think like, okay, I want to be great. What is that going to look like in the end? You need to start dreaming about what that looks like today. What you want that to look like in five minutes, in 10 minutes, as the moments pass, as you miss a moment, what does that look like? You know what I mean? You have to restructure your entire way of thinking. That's how things like church, the military, government, school were so powerful Powerful. because they had a plan. plan. So someone someone else else coming to say, no, don't don't do that. that. And you're like, okay, so what's your plan? Oh, uh, Oh, we're working uh, on this. (laughs) They got a plan. They got a plan. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I'm going to go back to the plan. You feel me? That's the only reason people keep going back. We got to give ourselves options. 
But naturally, yes, we are spicy motherfuckers. Like, we are very opinionated. We're very judgmental. We're very prejudiced. We can be very biased. But when it comes to me versus everything else going on in the world, that's how that mindset plays out. When I see me in everything in the world, I'm gonna be. I'm gonna create a whole different mindset. I'm gonna handle things differently. Right. I'm not gonna leave with anger anymore. I'm gonna leave with understanding. Mm -hmm. Okay, I, you said this, and the teacher said this. Run by me. What happened Tuesday again? Because it's not. I, it, it's not making sense to me. And I want to believe you. I want to believe the story, the story happened, happened the way you said, you said it. it. But a lot but of people, a lot got, people a lot got a lot of stories. stories. So, so the run, run me from, from, from the beginning. beginning. Yeah, you know, you know what I mean. mean? And, and, we, and that, we, we feel, feel guilty, guilty from, from doing, doing that sometimes. sometimes. I have. Oh, from I mean, detective over my kids, oh, yeah, and I know they sure. lying, and I'm trying to get them to tell the truth. Ah. And, 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 and you know, and, and and so I think too is like as a parent, we have to understand why do they feel the need to lie? Like again, if they're met with those harsher, um, you know, if if that there was beat or chastised before they had an explanation mm -hmm. they're going to re resort to i ain't said i don't trust you yeah. the fuck who asking you right <laughs> is it you or the nice lady that made me breakfast the other day which one of y'all is talking is her representative because that bitch is crazy i ain't tell her shit i don't trust her she clocked me upside the head and i didn't even do shit the other day the fuck <laughs> i really didn't do shit this then tyreek has told me that a lot of times he was like remember that one time you beat my ass and i ain't really do nothing and i was like damn my bad <laughs> and that stuff and people don't understand like because those things I'm become no nah, it is because we've grown from it and y'all have yeah. a great relationship we're okay yeah. to mess up we're okay not to know any better because no one knew any better at one point in time you know what i it's mean it's just staying there is the problem yeah exactly justifying it is the problem yeah justifying. you know what i mean and trying and not seeing your fault in it is the problem all of those things combined not taking accountability but going through that process, that to me is an act of love. Being able to go through that process and look like, look, I know what I've done may hurt you, but I truly, in the in the bottom of my heart, I did that out of love. I thought that's what was best for you at the time. That part. And that's what I told him. Like, it was easy. And it, even for the children where they're at now um, in their stages where I've been able to be like, you know what, my bad. Let me explain this to y'all. This is why I went the fuck off. Yeah. Cause y'all did X, Y, and Z. Let me put, let me let y'all know what y'all energy y'all contributing to the issue. Like having an actual conversation. Cause I think it's one thing to expect your children to perform at a certain level um, that you yourself may or may not be performing at. That's where we need to humble ourselves. Right. And I then, never tell you be humble, but in that moment, be humble. Yeah. <laughs> Cause it's like you want me to do what? I see what you do and what you don't do. Show, lead by example, right? Um, it's one of the things that yeah. my eldest has told me, like, mom, certain things, it's hard for me to be like, oh, I can go out and do this because I've never seen you do it before. And even though I can tell him the game because he's, he's at where he's at, yeah. but he's never physically seen me do certain things, right? So that's one thing to take up. Like, what, what the children, children are... are Imitating, mimicking, they've they seen, seen people, people do yeah. good, bad, or ugly. They've yeah. seen us do something, some portion, and now they're in their own mind trying to make sense of it and mimic whether it's television, YouTube, and you know, a conversation you heard on the corner. Exactly. It could be anything. A, a, a splice, a splice on the radio. They're yeah. like, what? What does that mean? You it know, and I'm thinking anything. about my little mind. I was so fucking crazy. I was making up all types of shit. I was like, damn, yeah. like, not in a lying way, but just in a way of. I used Creative. to love mine. Creative. I used to try to come up with good lies, just but I realized uh, like the 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 native in me. Shout out to the natives. It was. I, I like, like storytelling. I, I like, like how it makes people mm. feel. I like that you get their attention. I like that you can control the emotions. You can kind of send people on a roller coaster. That's where I'm at now. I like that it's education. It's yeah. lessons. It's warnings. It's signs. It's it's everything, and. When we start tapping more into those things, even our children, it will be hard for them to understand us. That's mm -hmm. why I only lead with my sacred people, my circle with, with grace and forgiveness. And I'm sorry and I fucked up. You know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm going to try. I'm going to try what I think is best. And it may not work out in the end. You feel me? It may not work out in the beginning, but I am I am working because I am doing what I think is best for me. I'm sending them the most important message because I was in a scary place in my 20s. And it's a place I realized a lot of people are at. Mm -hmm. You feel confident, 
but you're second guessing yourself. Even even knowledge, you start second guessing. Well, maybe that ain't right. You know, people told me a lot of things, and motherfuckers <laughs> lie. Shit, I used to lie. Uh, <laughs> this you is the, talking, you start talking this is back that into perpetual like... motion we live in when you are not holding yourself accountable. At a time when I was used to cheat on my girlfriends, I could, I could never, never live at peace in a relationship. Because every time she moved, like I used to move when I was cheating, I thought she was cheating. Mm -hmm. I was trapped mm -hmm. in a world that I that I try to maneuver around, and I realized I'm stuck in here. Cause she may be the most faithful person on earth, but I can't believe it. Cause I didn't get caught when I did this, and nobody ever found out about that. You live with the guilt of everything you got away with. So then you start creating this personality where you're looking to be punished. You need retribution because you think that's going to balance the scales. But sometimes, honestly, when you just get the lesson, you don't get tapped on the hand. You don't get hit with the brush. You don't get flicked. You just get the lesson because that's what the universe wants to happen. But if you hard hit it, I'm going to show you that head can crack. <laughs> How hard do you think your head is, fam? <laughs> Yo, did you see what I did to that mountain a thousand years ago? How hard do you think your head is? That's deep. <laughs> that's hella deep. Yeah, so it's 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 that's why accountability is so important. That's why doing shadow work is so important. That's why learning to love this journey is important because you're going to get to them dark spaces and you're like, how the hell do I love this? Find a way. That's the journey. That's yeah. your healing. This is your assignment. Find a way. Well, that motherfucker yelled at me every day. How do I love somebody like that? Find a way. You know what I mean? And that's when I had to humble myself. The moment I said something to the kids, I'm like, damn, how can I be worried about how somebody yelling at me and I think it's okay to yell at you? And I'm sitting here towering over you. I'm a whole damn. two feet bigger than you, wow. three feet bigger than you, yelling at you. Yeah. And I'm so upset. I don't even know why I'm this upset. And I can't yeah. turn back now because I'm here. <laughs> And then you trying to, and then so that that's 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 the part where if we don't take accountability, it's gonna do you do more damage. Yeah. Then you see it. Yeah. But then it's like, well, shit, I can't be a punk now. Because your street instincts like, kick in. Well, if I back, back down, down now, they gonna think I'm back backing down. down. Punk. Uh, I gotta get bigger. Right. Exactly. <laughs> I told y'all already. I already told y'all. You know. It's and like, you can only get there to me humbly. You can only get there if you haven't explored the worst that can go. I stopped even starting at the first step when I seen how bad this could potentially go one day. I said, okay, yelling ain't worth it. And I've just, because of stature, stature I've, never I've never been a whoop, whoop kind, of kind of person. But, but I've, I've never, never condemned their moms when they felt that was their only resort. Mm -hmm. I just, I'm too big. And I have more girls than boys. So I just can never see myself whooping them. And then in 20 years, beating up your boyfriend because he, because I showed you how to take whoopings. Exactly. You see what I'm saying? Exactly. I got you used to this. So how can I be mad at this motherfucker who's probably getting beat down to at home? Right. And you're probably. like, no, I can take it. You, you, you pressuring them to do it. So I had, <laughs> when I moved back to the city, I had met two, uh, two, two women that I knew that was getting actively popped on by they, by they dudes whenever they would get drunk. And then I, um, and I know a little, a younger um, girl too, recently that was telling me, you know, that her young boyfriend is just, just randomly, randomly bopping her side of the head, punching her and just doing things like that. And I'm like, what? Like I've been in altercations with men but it wasn't like okay you be mad today and we be together tomorrow we still here yeah you, know? you got into altercation and got to say some words and it was like okay this ain't it hands yeah. laid on we out of here yeah. it's not don't it. do this to the next person exactly. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. not it. um but then also learning how how my energy my energy looking back and back on, back on the, the I had I had situations, situations happen physically, physically. Uh -huh. and, and looking, looking back, back on, on those I, I could see how my energy brought somebody there how it was plenty of times for me to walk away mm. plenty of times for you me mean to like shut the person type? oh yeah. Oh yeah, let's get it on. Are we gonna yeah. fight? Then that's why. Oh, go. you a big man, huh? Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> let's go. We got I mean, to wipe costume. your ass. Let's get you a big go. man. Let's go. Let's go. Um, but also, <laughs> I I understood. Like, damn, I don't want to be that person to bring yeah. a, a man there. I don't want to be the person to bring a man to where he gonna put his hands on me. Now, mind you, it's a certain certain levels of respect and that and the other, like, cause we all grown out here, but. There was there's ways that you can instigate a situation 
um, based on the living a lie. Like, if you know this nigga from the streets, why are you arguing with him about he been with four other people that you just find out about? Yeah. Part of your cousins and your friends. It's a small world. <laughs> Everybody ain't outside, so they all just sharing the same people. <laughs> but at the end of the day, I've seen situations where women are, you know, y'all, they're giving and feeding into the lifestyle of being just ratchet and petty. Yeah. And comes with that is the fact that they're living lies, right? Mm. They're living multiple lies. Because again, if, if you're having a conversation, conversation with, with the guys for the streets, streets there should be, be no, or this woman is for the streets. Why y'all out here, dudes, two dudes out here, y'all here shooting at after the club or arguing yeah. over a woman that is. Don't even want to be domesticated with neither one of y'all. Y'all just friends. Y'all name ain't even saved in the phone. You got an initial, brother. And this is because this is why the programming doesn't work. This is why someone's saying, don't do that. It's only, only going to make you want to do it more. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so fear so does fear not work as a work catalyst for growth. Fear, fear works as a catalyst for being stagnant. Mm -hmm. So like, my fear, so I had to learn. Fear, and this is learn. just this asking is yourself the tough questions, the being, tough honest. being honest. My first two my was first these kind of situations. It was just to know, like, would you ever would have met? No, before I could finish asking the question, I do Women. Women. Well, that's, well, not, that's we're not we're asking, asking women. women. I just kept I saying, saying women. women. <laughs> you feel me? <laughs> and it was, it was this thing. thing. Like, and I'm, I'm not, not afraid, afraid of, of, of whooping, whooping anybody's ass. ass. I'm not afraid of putting my hands on anybody. The fear came that I would create this pattern with this woman. Mm. So then I would lose sensitivity and sensuality and romanticism because when I'm really upset and I want to express it with my feelings, she can't understand I'm upset unless I hit her upside the head. Mm. That's the only time she thinks I'm really upset about something and how I handle things. So I said, okay, this isn't about fear. This is about how you handle things. So I started to lead forward, like, okay, let's talk about it. So then when the kids came and it's time to whoop them, I'm like, how do you handle things? You talk about it. So let's talk about it. If I can talk about it with a stranger right? and you got my blood running through your body, <laughs> okay. I should be able to do this with you too. You get what I'm saying? And we're much better than strangers than we are with our kids. People are much better with steps than they are with their biologicals. And it's because there's no responsibility. There's no accountability. Mm -hmm. If I fuck up a stepkid, I could just break up with their mom. But if I mess up my kid, they're going to be 30. Like, remember the time when right. I was 10? <laughs> busted my teeth remember when you were so wrong for like 10 years? You was just wrong. Just wrong about everything. Yeah. Okay, call you back. Something coming up. Call you back. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't going nowhere, fam. Yeah, I love that. You feel me? So this is, for me, it's the ultimate accountability. I had to learn how to be everything. I had to learn how to treat my stepkids the same way I did my kids. Cause I used to not give my stepkids things just because I'm like, I feel like my kid is going to feel away or I'm taking from them or it, it was, it puts you in a rock in a hard place. It puts you and, right and, in the middle of some of these situations. Yeah. And so, and then that's, that's where we have to really be like, man, it's looking at looking yourself, at yourself now, now. How are you I'm, able to connect with people? That's not your blood. And I mean relationships. And I mean relationships. Like, relationships. Like, you have like now, you have now. You build relationships, you build relationships so, much so much to where, where again, they, again, they may come they before your children. Yeah. You understand yeah. what I'm saying? So yeah. now, now you're, you're able, able to, to look, look at, that. at that. You can you take, take that, that and it's, it's not intimacy in the same way. And that's why you're able to do that. It's because you're able to give yourself to your full self to this person mind spirit matter body all of that you're able to give yourself to this person surrendering yourself to this person and that's why the, the different levels of respect so when yeah. it comes to stepchildren or children that you didn't um that it's not from your seat it's still like hey you are able to find and hone in on a space where the same way you're able to give this other person the amount of love that's not from your blood, you're able to still do the same for children and seeing that they're, they got a journey. You're going to play a part in their journey. Mm -hmm. How you love them will play a part. Like how you teach and guide them will play a part in their journey. Like even for me, I'm, I'm living proof of my stepmother just being so much of what I didn't get to see from my family. Mm -hmm. She heard that her personality did not exist. And I'm thankful for it because it's like, wow, she was able to love me. I was I was born in within her union to my father. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And so I can't imagine. Even now I hear women like, man, fuck that bitch, fuck that yeah. baby. Ooh, saying all this shit. Like just that really they don't crazy. mean, they just hurt. Yeah, exactly yeah. hurt. But she wasn't that. 
and in, yeah. and and she could have expressed her hurt in a different way because I ultimately think certain things played on her illness. Like she passed from just holding, she was yeah. holding a lot of shit. She was definitely hurt. We all are in different ways, but she didn't let y'all see it. And that's love. These are the acts of love. When people talk about acts of love, I don't think gift giving and shopping and shit. I think these things. Right. And I think this is a conversation that doesn't get had in the home because a lot of people, and I hate to always throw y'all under the bus, but you're such an easy target. But these were a lot of the Christian relationships and dynamics that were being built. Certain conversations were taboo in the home that I want to have, I need to have. So no one's ever above or behind anyone when it comes to the hierarchy of a family. But as a husband, my wife is priority. I am raising my children to start their own families within my tribe. My wife is going to be with me the rest of this life. We are not going to separate. So if it does seem like sometimes she's getting favor over the children, guess what? That's that's what's happening. And when I'm not here, she has to give y'all everything she has. I yeah. have to give her more. Exactly. But I couldn't have those conversations in my home because they, excuse me, the kids went to church. My parents didn't even go to church, right. but we were Christian. <laughs> so they, I never heard them talk about it like that. Mm -hmm. It was the conversations we see on Facebook. Well, you just made your pork chop dinner. Who eats first, your husband or the kids? And, it, and I don't think those are always negative divides. I think that shows who where everybody at how everybody feel yeah, and, and i love i want to have those conversations who yeah. do me first sis? exactly so at the end of the day, <laughs> what, what happens is after you've been in that role such as myself for so long over and over thinking that mentality and then you wind up thinking like well damn it was only a handful of times i got fed first yeah and, and so, so then, then i stopped to say, say no if i'm slaving over, over the meal sometimes y'all get get your asses up and come get the meal and that's where we miss out as men. We become we become the thing that we we're afraid to be the most. And a lot of friend, men are afraid to be the uh, uh, the spoiled little mama's boy. And we become that to our wives. And I, I noticed myself doing it, and I had to start you know addressing myself and adjusting things in myself because I realized I was becoming too comfortable with receiving the back rubs at night, but not giving one. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You feel me? And, and I'm way and too that, comfortable with that. And, that will go and she's on. becoming comfortable with that. And I don't like, and deep in my soul, I don't like that. Yeah. When the switch came on of what, 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 where was I and what have I been doing? It was a lot of things that I, I just like, it was like I was spinning for, for days and days and days realizing that I had continuously sacrificed, which is why I'm primarily in the situation that I'm in now. The universe is like, no, you you can sit down for a second yeah. because you you have literally blocked out all of this time and energy for yourself given into everybody else mm -hmm. and yeah this yeah. ain't it so man a new season the new season of my life this last 10 years has been reciprocation which you decided you're gonna put in don't pressure them to put in but you need to be looking and addressing if they are putting that in yes even those 10 minute phone calls where you just let them vent that is powerful. People don't know how draining that is. I don't be one to do. I love people. Yeah. I don't always be one to do that because I'll be tired. Sometimes I just want silence. Mm -hmm. No just, noise, no talking. I, I I don't want to tell y'all to stop hold your breath, but just just quiet. Just yeah. I've had some friends that I've <laughs> overloaded, and I'll be like, Oh my gosh, how are you doing? I'm sorry. sorry. <laughs> my conversation has been about, about me. me. I'm sorry, but, but that's listen. People literally call me to hear about what's going on in my life. Like, what's new? <laughs> Oh, we, we all do the same thing. I do the same thing with you that I do with my brother Jay Will. And when I can feel y'all dragging, I'm like, oh, I'm on a monologue. All right, I'm about to, they like, we might get out of here. <laughs> Cause I'm like, damn, I just ran it. And it's because the five people I've seen before them can't have these kind of conversations yes, with me. Yes, that's what it be. But then I had to learn through grace that still does not allow me to dump my shit on anybody. No, I'm getting better. You know what I mean? I'd be like, hey, you got a quick minute. Yeah, and it'd be like we on for an hour. Yeah, yeah, quick. Both four out. Like, what you about to get into? <laughs> but I love that because I know how my life goes. I'm humble to realize, nigga, you would have spent the hour scrolling. That part. You would have spent the hour on Netflix, thirty minutes commercial. That part. That part. And I've done better with cleansing. You know what I mean? So I love that shit. Now I love it. So release, but release it too. And, and, and speaking, speaking of releasing, of releasing like, like putting, putting yourself, yourself on, on fast. Like, like there's, there's many things you can fast besides fast. 
Yes. And Size as you can see, I moved TV yeah. out of the room. And so as you can see, I moved TV, TV in the front room. So we don't have a TV in the front room anymore because I was like, I watch TV when I go. Like, I watch TV when I go out of the TV. I'm like, oh, okay. And I still get stuck. And I still get stuck. I'll be standing in the middle of the room. And it's nothing wrong with these things. Like, they're far and they're far and they're putting your friend in the same room. But for me, I got a lot of things I need to focus on. So it was like, certain things I was okay with releasing. Like, okay, so good. What will prevent me from moving and doing things I need to do? Okay, television. I can do without that. Because sometimes I would just put it on for, they, they say background noise. Mm -mm. Yeah. It ain't background noise. It's yeah. other things. Oh, you download. Oh, exactly. For You're sure. downloading for sure. So I, I, I agree because I used to be that person, especially in college. And I, I magic to me is repurposing. It's, again, it, energy cannot be destroyed. So stop trying to destroy things. It's repurposing. It's making right. it work in your favor. So I started putting lectures on in the background. I started putting meditation. Mm -hmm. Like you yeah. said, you're still, still downloading. That's, That's why you see so many people famously listening to things while they sleep. You are still down. I used to listen so to in my twenties. I listen to lectures in my sleep. Mm -hmm. I listen to lullaby melodies because that's how the lullaby gets you it lulls you in with the melody yeah, yeah. and then they put some words get your mom get your dad take all the money get out of town you don't need them you better than this <laughs> like hold on what <laughs> run that back what they say the lullaby, <laughs> the lullaby. you know what i mean but this used to be my test i'm not proud to say it but i am proud of the data i collected during these type of experiments my early relationships were experiments i had to learn how to love people i had to learn how to address things the TV was in the room because I wanted to find the one who's like, no, let's turn the TV off and talk. But I wasn't going to let you know that's so on that, my mind or agenda. It was my, a test. And I had to realize, like, it was a test. I had to realize, like, why you, you want to be with somebody? Right? You got to put through all these Why you want to be with somebody? You got to put through all these rigorous tests. You know, it's crazy because I think the world we live in, as we're communicating, people naturally think people naturally have to ask to a guy, I was like, um, he said something he about, said something about who's going to go, who's going to go or wanted to, or wanted to meet, meet, meet me or whatever. Okay. Okay. And I was like, hey, let's go. Um, let's go to the pool or something. He's like, what is that? The test. <laughs> And I, and I was like, like bro, bro, get bro, 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 bro. Test, I'm just saying, like, we can go to poo if you're trying to meet up. It's me that I'm to poo. Um, but yeah, that's I guess that's like a guard thing with both people or both oh, yeah. sides. But again, again as we're, as, we're, as, you're, as you're going about, going about your daily, daily life, life, you'll have things that come, come up. And you're yeah. going to either answer the question at that moment or you're just going to let it be there and act like it never yeah at all. and in a lot of instances um those people are constantly being tested i don't want to just make this exclusive to men but my experience as a man everything was a test nigga are you gay you got money can you fight can you, is you funny <laughs> i can only see you on the phone is you tall <laughs> you sound short and i'm just looking like uh i mean <laughs> oh my goodness what's your shoe size what oh, you like? What's word. your favorite color? Where okay, I is this 21 it. questions? Like so it's how do you get to know somebody? Like we're taught to yeah. okay. So remember those little those little things, those floaty thingies that you had to do, those little answer. Oh yeah, the number game. Yeah, you had to do those or like the, there like was the origami you smash, remember smash? Yeah. Y'all remember smash? I do. People age. are definitely yeah. asking stuff like this. No, I remember smash. That's how we're, we're still listening. We were sick as kids. Oh my gosh. You want to hear You got to murder one, F one, kill one. Like, what? Yes. Why are we playing games like this? <laughs> it didn't start off like that. I remember starting off with like your favorite foods, like your favorite colors, um, your favorite places to travel. It was, it was like, like little shit like that. that. Yeah. And then, yeah, it, it was. It to was, me, I it's, got, to me, it's late. There. To me, it's uh, oh, it's, mash, mash, okay, mash games. Yes, help me to out. To me, here. it's lazy dating. You, you get, get to know me through being around me. I, I need you, you got to see me on the video game, game cussing out a little kid, but also you got to see me in the classroom <laughs> teaching little kids. You feel me? Like you gotta, you gotta see me in every okay, space. Okay, so, so this is the question. <laughs> this is the question. Okay, so if you're texting or you're using social like if you're going through this means what questions are it safe to ask where it's not feel, make you feel like you're being tested so for so me because it is a test is a you gotta just gotta get out of your mind, mind that i'm being tested and i don't like it it's, so it's it a, is test. a test life is a test absolutely everything is a test learning how to walk was a test learning how to talk and you had to do it by a certain age it's all a test you get what i'm saying so what i do for me 
It depends on what the scenario is. It depends on the person. So we'll talk about somebody close to me, somebody personal, personal to, me. to me. You know what, you know what I mean? mean? I, I feel, feel like, like we first have to come to terms that this is a test. And then we have to address what are we looking for out of this test? You feel what I'm saying? Right. And then when it comes to getting me, I mean, it could be. And when they fail, what the f*** to do? Say no. Oh, when they <laughs> fail, you got to have consequences. You got to have something set up. Either you're going to say, okay, you get three strikes. Or... If you fuck up once, you're done. Because a part of your acceptance, I got to let you know the rules. A lot of things we signed up for is under the notion something else was going to happen. Until now, it's the awkwardness of, uh, why is this happening? They're just like, well, this is this who I am. <laughs> Something dumb. You know what I mean? So for me, I just want to know these things up front. Let me know what I'm getting myself into. That's the first test. That lets me know if you even take interest in what I'm doing. Right. So then it depends on the setting we're in. If we're in a phone setting, oh, I get spicy. And you see how I'm spicy? I don't like to talk about sex. I hate talking about sex, actually. Love the act. Hate the conversations. Because it just feels fake. It feels dull. It feels like we're pretending we're a part of something we're not experiencing or expressing. And I don't want to give somebody the wrong idea that we're experiencing or expressing something else. So let's say we're on the phone. I actually do this in my relationship. I text, I say, what's one of your fantasies? So again, this is a test. Because if your fantasy is, you feel me, being choked out by 12 truckers at a truck stop, wow. I, I need to know that. <laughs> if your fantasy is you play the piano while I cook for you, okay. What song are you going to play? You see how the conversation can grow off of that? What song yeah. are you going to play? What you want to cook? What you allergic to? So now I'm caring about your health. Because people automatically hear fantasies and think sexual. You think? Sexual. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. You see why I don't like to talk about sex? It's too easy. Yeah. We could name our we could name our brand Jesus Life. We would have a million viewers right now and a thousand units sold. We don't even know what we're selling. It's too easy. Exactly. And I don't want that. I don't want that. And so the crazy <laughs> thing is that... Um, so the crazy thing is when people are asking shoe size and your height, yeah. these are sexes type of... Absolutely, 100%. And we don't see it that way. This is a whole nother podcast. Oh, and this is a whole other discussion. <laughs> This is, but this is the same thing that we do as men. No, I'm saying, you know I, what I mean. We I, have these same principles, set, and it may not always be right, but we're true to it. Yeah, because you've seen that show where they <laughs> pop the balloon. Yeah, <laughs> that shit is off. That shit is crazy. And it was crazy, crazy because, because it's like, like when, when you, you start, start talking, talking to these people, people about why they pop the balloon, why they pop the balloon, it's so, so fucking shallow. shallow. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Then you're trying, oh, yeah. then you're trying yeah. to see how materialistic, how shallow, the mind, how shallow like the mind is. Like we're not, we're not, getting we're not, back we're not into, getting back okay, into okay, is love is based love on, based on myself. Like I'm, I'm channeling it. Like yeah, you want to be attracted to the person, obviously, because that's the first thing you see. You want to be attracted, but then it's levels to this shit. Right? Are you still on? Yeah. No, I think it. Yeah. Am I frozen? Are you? I think you froze, but the volume is still on. Having troubles. But no, I agree with you. That that is a part of it. You know what I mean? I don't want to spend the rest of my life next to somebody I don't like looking at in the morning. This. You feel me? Like that. That's that's a reality of it. These are things we have to come to terms with. But I think when we get in trouble is when that's the only thing that we're focused on. That's the only thing we care about. We're now starting to dictate how we feel about this person based on how they look and what they provide and bring to the table. So then you get out of the relationship with them. Now you're in a relationship with your fantasy of them, how you've always dreamt them to be. And that person can never live up to that standard. You don't even know who that person is. You just get glimpses of it. You know what I mean? You get feelings of it and moments of it. But they're a whole person with an existence. When you're not around them, their life's still going. They don't just hit pause and go in the closet till you come back in the house and they're like, all right, dear, you're hungry? And that's how some people would dream it to be and that's how some people need it to be. The relationship with them. Not you know what I mean? That's how some people need it to be because you are here to fulfill their fantasy. They're not here to be with you. They're here to be with the version of you that's best for them to deal with. They're here to be with the version of you that if they fuck up royally, do one of your deal breakers, you're going to overlook it. You're going to say, no, nah, it's not so bad. I'll give you another chance. That's why they're connected to you. So me in the beginning, I want to have these questions. What are your what are your red flags? What are your deal breakers? What can I do right now that will end this? 
You know what I mean? Because sometimes it makes things easier for me when I know what I can do because it makes me more confident. If you're like, all right, well, put your hands on me. And I know I'm never going to do that. I'm like, oh, shit. Okay. I could be here forever. What else? Uh, just make sure you tell me you love me. Okay. All right. Bad. Bad. It's going to be easy. What, what else you require? And then you get to that point in some stops, again, points I've been to in my relationship that it's like, okay, I don't know what I want. I don't know how to be loved. I don't know what you can do. Mm. And good that you got me because I can work with that. Great. Okay, let's figure it out. Let's try new things. What are things that in your past relationships, what are things in your past life when you were single that you told yourself you always wanted to do, but you never found the time made around to? Let's do that first. What are the things you're most afraid of? Let's do that first. And it's usually things we already have going on. Well, it's public speaking. Oh, come get on the pod. Let me show you how this is nothing. It's easy. This is why I don't gas this up and say, oh, I'm supreme podcaster. This is nothing. This is just having a conversation. And if you already do that, this will be nothing to you. Oh, well, it's uh, being embarrassed. Oh, well, come out and do yoga with my sis. She going to bend you, stretch you, turn you sideways in front of a room full of strangers. Come do it. Oh, it's um, it's... It's, it's breaking out of my comfort zone. Okay, come some, come try some new food. Come try some African food. Have you had food from Brazil? Do you know that there's not just a Spanish type of food? They all got their different cuisines. Right, exactly. You get what I'm saying? So now we things that we already naturally do, now we get to go home like, shit, I'm changing the world. Okay. So the things I've been doing this whole time can help people. All of this is our awakening. I am not thinking I'm woke trying to wake the next person up. We are all trying to be awoke at the same time. Because even if two people ain't woke, ain't none of us woke. We all still sleep. You dig? So the goal is to get all of us on that same level and platform. Until we get there, we haven't finished. Nothing. We ain't done nothing. These awards don't mean shit. These titles don't mean nothing. This money don't mean nothing. If your people ain't healthy, if your people ain't educated, you ain't done nothing. Because it's still climbing in a negative way. We ain't doing nothing. So that becomes your purpose. Mm -hmm. And if your purpose is anything but, you're lost, my friend. You're distracted. And if you know the way, you're choosing still to be lost and distracted. You're worse off than anybody you think you're trying to help. Anybody you think you got the answers for, they need, you need to be consulting them. You dig? And once we get to that place of humility, we'll know the right way. But trying to search for the right way, you're going to get even more lost. You got to stop going the wrong way. That's your problem. Your problem isn't you don't know the right way. The problem is you're going the wrong way. Oh, I'm looking for my light. I'm looking for this. The problem isn't that you need to find your light. You need to stop getting rid of it. You are the light. You already have the light. The problem is you keep dimming it. Right. That's your journey. It's not to find more light that you can that you can dim less than what you can find. No, stop dimming altogether because then guess what? When you meet people that bring you light, yeah. You got a new problem. Yeah. You got a good problem. What do I do with all this abundance? And that's that. If that's my only problem every day, that's a good life. I've won. I've won. I, I don't need anything else. I don't need your money. I don't need your status. I don't need people to say, oh, where he's in Africa now. Now he's in China. Now he's no. When the universe tell, calls me to Africa, that's when I'm going to go. When the universe calls me to China, that's when I'm going to go. And in the meantime, people like my sister that gets to go whenever they want to go. I now have a purpose to celebrate them, to learn from them, to ask her, yo, how was the trip? How was the weather? Was it any weird niggas there? Was it any fine women there? Like I get to, I get to be, I get to be a kid again. Right. You know what I mean? And I've built so many pillars in my life. Not a lot of people see me in that place. They're just like, y'all want to help you. And I realized I had to make myself more vulnerable. I never got the help when I asked, so I stopped asking for help. But now it's all these people who are helpers too who miss out. And they're like, yo, how we want to help you. We want to do for you. And and it's, it's amazing, though, once you start living life purpose, how just the alignment happens. Like, it's almost like, so the more you get, you release and be your higher self, right? The more you do that, the easier it is for people to align with you that's on that same path. I'm like, that has the help, that, that has the means, that has whatever it is that you're looking for. Um, that's when I'm finding out, like, man, just showing up for myself has put me in so many great spaces. I've met so many amazing people. And again, my girl said it the best, Sunny. She said, your net worth, your network is your net worth. Like connecting, connecting with people. So, but as far as releasing goes, you have to find the truth in the matter and live that and stop living lies on every level. 
whether it's food, whether it's relationships, whether it's shows or music or a way you've been parenting or a way you've been working, your work ethics, like the way you've been doing business, like find out the truth and expose the truth. Let the truth have its way in your life. That's the light. The truth, truth is light. So truth in all matters. And you can be like, oh, okay, like, like for instance, vegan is not the 100% only way, right? Because there's people that don't have that don't have that mindset and still are able to spiritually aware they're still have fruitful lives um their system is set up to so but once you find out truth about food in your body how it's showing up in your life you gotta like expose that shit mm -hmm. because you may not be so one person may not be affected but you may be personally be affected by dairy or by milk or i mean by uh, animal products you may have some ailment, maybe you're on medication, or maybe you're dealing with some type of diagnosis after effects of those type of things. So mm -hmm. the truth of the matter would be that these type of foods affect your body in this type of way. Mm -hmm. Once you find that out and see that that's the truth of the matter, you got to live that shit out or it's just going to mm haunt -hmm. you. And then you're going to be more affected by it in a negative way because you lying to yourself like, well, no, nah, I ain't really aching. Yeah. I don't really got this going on. I don't really got, you know, I ain't really, you know, not sleeping. And they and they live in that delusion because they don't realize their ailment is anecdotal. You know what I mean? I had that in college. Like there was players who could eat McDonald's every day and was still the most athletic, fastest, beastiest motherfucker on the team. Thank you, too. So what's happening to you is just happening to you in that sense. You know what I mean? You can't say, oh, well, no one can do this. Right. You can't do that. And that's living in your truth. Right. Seeing how... Instead of trying to identify how everyone can't do it. You know what I mean? This is your journey. Yeah, that was a great question. We was I was about to bring that up next. Oh, somebody said, um, speaking of releasing, how can you tell when you've actually released something? There are times where I thought I've released something and it ends up popping back up in my head. Um, popping back up in your head is not saying that you didn't release it. It's just to make you aware of you know, maybe you need to check on it. Maybe, yeah. maybe you need to check how much energy you're still giving to it. Or maybe it's not necessarily, it's not released. It's just something that's still unfinished. Yeah. Um, that you still need to give concern to, or, you know, show concern or maybe release concern. Like maybe you don't need to be concerned about something. Yeah. So I think that naturally, um, as you're cleansing self and you're going through releasing things and you got to replace it with something. You know, we got it. something else still needs to go in that place. We can't be empty souls. You know, we got yeah. to be full of things. So I agree. If and you're, go ahead. No, I was going to say, I agree. You can only give your attention 100% to one thing at a time. Mm -hmm. So replacing it is, I mean, that's, that's along the whole path and plan of moving on from things in general. Mm -hmm. And I think when you release something, it no longer triggers you. So I love mm -hmm. my triggers because it shows me where I need to heal. One of my biggest triggers when I was younger was cigarette smoke. So it triggered me so bad, I wouldn't go places where people smoked. If you remember our childhood, you could smoke indoors, you could smoke in restaurants. Restaurants had a smoking section. These kids of the today won't believe that. They had a smoking but restaurants section. had a whole... With a little simple ass... With a drape. Ain't stopping. The smoke <laughs> rise is still going. You ain't stopping and nothing. I mean, everywhere had a smoking. I mean, you, you hospitals smoke. everywhere had a smoking section. Oh. Tattoo parts, places that tell you we're supposed to be sanitary. They ain't hear ash and cigarettes. Yeah, and and um, I think I think I might have shared this with you in private. But when I was in second grade, my second grade teacher um, in Youngstown, Mrs. Ross, she smoked cigarettes in the class with us. Thugging. There's a couple people that, and then, you know, like on the way to class, they were smoke cigarettes. In office, they could smoke. The police station, they could smoke. The fire department, they could smoke. All of these places was smoking. You, They little smoking shield. They ain't stopping nothing. So I had to learn. So this is how you know life is a journey. I had to learn in that moment, okay, you are going to be around smoking sometimes. It's in the world. So if you try to avoid this, you ain't never going to go nowhere. Ain't got nowhere. <laughs> You're going to be in this little bubble your whole life. You get what I'm saying? So I had to learn, okay, my journey is not to intentionally go places that are that people are smoking at. But if I'm at the train station catching the train, 
And even if it's some pregnant lady out there puffing, I can't have an emotional attachment to what's happening. I can still educate her on how I feel about what you're doing, but I can't let this ruin my day. Yeah. I can't now carry this in at home to my spouse or my partner or my friend. Like, let me tell you about my morning and this pregnant lady. And we do that. I used to do that all the time. My mom is a, a, a shit talker. She a talker on the phone. I used to pick that up. So I just get to shit talking because I, I think I'm releasing. You dig? And that's a lot of times why we still feel we're releasing because we're not releasing properly. What we think we're doing, we think is releasing. Right. But if you can't tell me I know what I'm doing, you don't know what you're doing. If you can say I think or I heard, that means you don't know. So that means you got to do something different because now you've tried that. That doesn't work. Right. So then I had to physically some days release. That's why I say it depends on what happens. Super heavy days, I release everything. I release communication. I release obligation. I tell my kids, look, we don't went through the system. You know how to feed yourself. I need you to feed yourself for a couple hours. I need y'all to just be quiet and keep things down. Like, because one more thing going to tip me over and I'm not going to address that on y'all, but think about how that could go. I'm going to go out into the world and what, be some guy up and now his kids got to deal with that at home. It's, it's going to offset some way. So I can be the catalyst. I can be the one that says, no, it doesn't have to happen that way. You get what I'm saying? So the next comment says proper ways of releasing. So again, Ooh. Uh, think about, think about in a natural sense of things we release, like water in the bathtub or um, trash, right? Take out yeah. the trash. A balloon. A balloon. Uh, right? Yeah. <laughs> so even in those sense, right, you can take your situations and what you're going through and you're saying, hey, I, I want to release this or I don't want this to be a part of me or that and the other. So showers yeah, and baths are good ways to, you know, put some herbs in, set the intention in the water, cleanse the bathroom, cleanse your space and really barricade yourself in the moment of all of the things that you want to release. Yeah, that could be the emotions, that could be the words, the ideology, the mental that you've been holding, the thoughts that you've been having about the situation, the lies you've been telling yourself. Oh, I ain't gonna ever be nothing. I'm, I'm this type of parent. I'm this, and the other. How we down talk, especially as mothers. Like the mothers have that a lot. I don't know the internal conversation for fathers, but I know the natural internal conversation for mothers is that they never measure up. That mm. they're this. They're never going to measure up to be the great best mother they're gonna always make mistakes it's like the self-talk the guilt is real mm -hmm. mother's guilt is real it's really for real yeah they naturally just whenever they can miss one thing and drop over they can spill milk literally mothers have cried i've cried i've been a pumping oh mother crying over spilled milk literally. <laughs> so it's similar with fathers um what i would say um you have to use your imagination this is why meditation is so powerful. This is why I tell people the first start of your healing is becoming proactive. Um, this is even something I brought up in my relationship as far as what we were talking about as the downtime. Now in those, I just listen to meditation music. So things are being released that I don't even realize is being released, but I have a schedule. I do my yoga and meditation routinely. So things that could even stick without me knowing has already been released because this work is constantly releasing. I do water fasting where I'm only consuming water, but most of it is imagination. Like you said, that's powerful. That's how I use the drain when I'm in the shower. I close my eyes when I used to work. See, this is, we do a lot of these things. We just have to repurpose it. Yeah. When people are at work and you fantasizing about killing your boss, you got to repurpose that imagination because that's beautiful imagination. I love it. Oh, I got the stapler. I would just, that's beautiful. I love that. But stop giving this random nigga with no hair in the middle of his head all your energy. Yeah. And still got the hair on the sides. He don't care about his life. He don't care about how things go. He half-ass do shit. Stop giving those people all of your energy. Yeah. So when I'm in the shower, I use my imagination. I picture my boss and his boss and probably his spoiled-ass little kids. And they all swirling down the drain. And they strapped and they can't get out. And I'm the only one that can close the drain. I'm like, beg. Beg for your life, little nigga. Like, I... <laughs> I'm in it. You feel me? And I'm releasing. I'm letting it go. Yes, letting it go. You know what I mean? And my principle for myself is you're not a tough guy either if you ain't about to go put his family down the drain. If you can only imagine this happening to somebody, keep it keep it at home. Keep it in your head. Don't be online talking all tough with your fingers. You dig? Like, let's let's keep it reasonable and practical. This is how we get to our highest self. 
you got to all listen my homie said it perfectly like the time that you got to be on there is no clocking out or clocking in like once you clock in you're here once you're on the spiritual path you're here there is no back home yeah because i think i think that was uh, you are home never <laughs> <laughs> you once you and see that's that's why it's that's why it's powerful for us to start living the truth and expose lies because once you see it you can never unsee it mm -hmm. once you see the truth of the matter once you understand that this is the truth you'll never be able to go back and unsee that thing you'll never yeah it, it scares it, you to life yeah it scares you <laughs> so so the, the, the powerful thing though is submitting to that right we yes. always talk about submitting in relationships oh the woman's listening to men blah, 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 blah. Listen, we're not even there. To yourself, yeah, we ain't self. even there. We ain't asking men on relationships. Y'all yeah, gotta submit to yourself. To your higher self, because yourself will once you like when you're cleansing, like Tim said, the water fasting. You know, you could do that. You can break it up even for a day. You can set a couple of hours where you're like, hey, from the time I wake up until this time, I'm gonna do nothing but have tea and water. You yeah. know what I'm saying, or just only fruit. Like you can set, like you set the tone for you. It's nobody. No, we can tell you the things that, that help us out, but you're really setting your own tone. Yeah. There, um, there's plenty of ways. I mean, should you, re you should be releasing when you go to the bathroom. Like, so even that is toxic release. You exactly. Toxic waste that's being released. So there's plenty of ways to release um, and to replenish what's there. He yep. said, you say you fill up the time with music. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Or, or literature, or maybe you want to learn something. Just maybe you can have a conversation about self-love you know pa yeah. positive confirmation some affirmation words or music that is infusing you while you're going through all of these things together and mind you we're creating a new person daily so this is something that is not oh i'm gonna do this for a week oh i didn't see that that said wrong i'm gonna do this for a week it says birth plug i didn't see that when i came back in uh <laughs> i'm sure they didn't see it's not something that you're just doing for a week right yeah we're doing this. Yeah. So, and you're the only judge and jury to, you're the only one that can feel the makeup on the inside of your body. What's going on? What makes you come and go? Like, you're the only person that can really speak to that high of the highest level of that. Um, we can advise you in terms of our tactics and what we use or the situation, but you have to make up in your mind if it's what name something that we're releasing i don't know what's oh name? guilt regret so guilt okay and you feel guilty about something that you did the situation you gotta go and unpack all that shit. okay so what actually happened yeah i didn't arrive on time and i didn't make as much money as i wanted to do the thing i feel guilty okay so why aren't you in arrival time yeah well because i had this situation happen i had to get dressed and say the other okay so now we know on days that you got to go sell and make money we're going to give yourself an hour and a half so we're going to have our clothes ready that day we're going to pick out the outfit the night before like back back in school yeah and you're going to give yourself some extra time in the bathroom yeah you know love on yourself take your time in the bathroom so that way you're not rushed okay what else going on i ain't sell as much money why don't you sell as much money yeah. i didn't promote okay so we now we know to promote so now we can come out of that we have a whole conversation face the truth of what happened yeah take accountable to what you did how you showed up how you represented your business or yourself whatever the guilt is or i whooped my child right let's talk about that she said she can't hear me oh um, i can't hear it probably went out on there is it oh yeah there it goes it. so yeah you can hear okay me. it's working so again. um yeah yeah no i agree you got to take accountability is what i was saying yeah yeah and and everything you said is on point is you'll be the best space you'll be in the best space in your healing journey when you realize you're never going to get off this healing journey you know what i mean this is what i this is what i teach people in um this is what i teach people in therapy you know what I mean? You got to get afraid of, you got to get unafraid of the work because you're always going to do the work. As you heal trauma, you're creating new trauma is literally how it works. You're going to traumatize yourself by how you had to heal that last situation. So you're always going to be healing. That's the first anecdote. And then it's realizing you have options. Just how she gave you an option. That's why you need discernment because you may need that option. Okay. I need to get up early. And in another situation, your option may be, I'm not living in my truth. The truth is, I'm never on time to places. Yeah. 
So now my most productive, highest version of myself is when I go start a new commitment with somebody, I tell them like, look, I'm on my own time. I might not be on time every day of the week, but I'm going to be there. I'm going to give 200%. I'm going to be attentive. I'm going to network. I may bring tea in the morning, but I ain't going to be on time because I'm just not an on-time person. I'm on my own time. That's how I choose to live my life. That's living in your truth. Not saying, oh, well, they offer me an extra 10 grand. I, I guess I'm a morning person now. No, but we you know what I mean. To, so, but, but and then that's the thing. You have to um, once you once you fall in love with yourself and put yourself first and give yourself that ultimate love that we talked about. Not really um, uh, submitting yourself to another person. Once you submit to who you are, you can say things like that. Yeah. Uh, you know what? I kind of moved to my own beat. Some mornings I wake up extra early and I'm super like, let's go 7.30 in the morning. Let's go for a walk and a hike. And some days I'm like, nah, I want to sit and chill and roll around in the bed for another 30 minutes and then figure out what I want to do. And then if even if I have things planned, it's like, okay, I will meet you there. I will be there. But I'm my, my spirit is basically will be like pulling me back from things that I don't need to be at. And so then I end up not being on time to certain things. Mm -hmm. And I have to, I had to have the conversation with self like, it's not that I'm, it's not integrity. It's not this and that and the other. It's that, oh, spirit ain't supposed to be there. Yeah. I, so, and, and that's the way that it shows up sometimes for me. It's like, oh, okay. But then whenever I stress over arriving someplace, it always was like some comforting moments that was there to, you know, if I had a, if I could have reserved all that stress, that pressure I put on myself, I did not know this was waiting here. So now I'm in, I've had that happen so much. I'm in the mindset of whenever I'm timing as an issue, I never am speaking negative to myself. Yeah. I'm always like, oh, when you get there, there's going to be like super stuff there waiting for you. You're going to arrive on time. Like the meeting is going to be so amazing. The people are going to vibe with you. It's going to be dope. Yada, yada, yada. I go on and on. Like I, yeah. I gas myself up because I know what is, I know what it can do to my internal, um, holding that negative energy of trying to be in control over something that's out of my hands right now. Yeah. Because I can, if I could, I would just fly my shit there. Why can't exactly. I just fly my car to the place of me? <laughs> Why can't I teleport? Hey, all the ones we go now. All right. And that's what sets you aside. Control of that. I got to get there how I can get there. I'm sure. Transportation is right now automobile and sometimes I, and i gotta submit to the lights you understand yeah and and other and other that don't know where they want to be in life that so. to me is your highest self it, it <laughs> your part of your journey has to be selfish in some aspects but life is perspective anyway so what's selfish to somebody might not be to the next person what's spoiled to somebody might not be to the next person so you have to learn to love your life in a way to realize you are still responsible for other people when you go to live out in the world. When you're at home, you can wear nothing, do whatever you talk about, sailor, do whatever you want to do. When, when you're out in the world, your decisions affect other people. This is how so many people dig themselves in a trench by trying to put you in a situation that you can create pressure on yourself. I don't care what time we show up because I know the work we're going to do. Yes. But if someone's like, we got to be here at nine, I'm the type of person like, all right. You know what that means? You got to be here at night too, right? <laughs> you feel what I'm saying? So the pressure is already put on them because of the circumstances. Yeah, yeah. So now I know myself. I, I don't mind getting to places early. I am more prepared when I get there early. I do see the advantages. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. But now there's a lot of pressure on you because if I get here before you, I'm going to be looking like shit ain't sweet. I don't want to high five and do the Wayne's Brother intro. I don't want to kick it. I don't want to talk. You feel me? Like, why are you late? <laughs> I thought we was in here at nine. Like, why is you? Why is the doors unlocked? Like, what are we doing? Yeah, exactly. So why are we putting all this pressure on ourselves? It's because we don't know why we left the last thing. People left the last job because they didn't like how they managed to talk to them. You left the last job because you didn't like the pressure and responsibility. So why do you think entrepreneur is not going to be 10 times the pressure and responsibility of a job? Exactly. So if that's why you left your job, you're going to hate this path just like you just hate that path you came off of. The intentions matter in that context, but then you can't overplay the intentions and the contribution for the context because it's perspective. Again, you can have two employees and one don't give a fuck about this job and they're the best employee in here and one stresses about it. They're going to get fired tomorrow. They're probably the worst motherfucker in right, here. Right, exactly. 
exactly. You see what I'm saying? Those things will translate. That's why I live my life that way. It's not because I think I'm better than people who are on time. It's because I spent a third of my life rushing to everywhere I got. And the things that I found out were the most beautiful things in the world I was missing. I was missing a little duckling on the side of the road and the mother trying to get them across the road. I was missing the flower blooming. I was missing the bees. I was missing the trees because I was moving so fast that I had to be here at nine. And I'm already waking up earlier than I want to. So now I got to try to get alert. I got to brush my teeth and wash my ass. I got to eat. I got to make sure the kids is going. I, I got to do all of these things before I even got to the place I don't even want to be to begin with. Yeah. And, and this, listen, <laughs> I'm trying to Sounds tell crazy. I'm trying to tell you something. You learned how to calm yourself down from that time. That is really, like, people are out here really dying from heart attacks. Yeah. Right? You understand that? Like, people, a heart, their attack, their heart is under attack. Your body can't keep up with your lifestyle. Yeah. You over here pushing it, and I I know that lifestyle personally. Like I've seen myself enraged from other people not performing fast enough the way yeah. they needed them to, and that's the ugly side of me. I never want to see that person again. I'm ever. sure. You know, no. unless you need her. Yeah, unless she. I mean, she there for when she needed, and yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's not a pretty sight to command and demand people to move at the speed that you need them to, and if they yeah. if they fall short, you like you diminishing them as a whole person it's trauma that was my mom my mom needed everything to be perfect because if things was not 99 percent, 99.8 percent out of 100 it was wrong it was an f and she lived her whole life like that and it and i and i rebelled against her when i felt it was personal but then when i got older and learned what happened to her i felt that regret i felt guilty you know what i mean to me i felt so guilty a couple years ago we was at a photo shoot in um atlanta and I was doing something to the hair and she she was like she was young, like seven or eight. And she was like, Do we gotta be perfect all the time? Mm. And then shit just hit me because it's like, yo, we already then flew, we flew to Atlanta, because that's that was our meetup spot for me and their father. We flew to Atlanta. Okay. I had the rental car. We already met my friend at the park that she told us to meet her at for the pictures. We already got us shirts because it was like literally impromptu that day. She was like, yeah, I could do pictures today if y'all going to be in town. I was like, oh, shit, let me go get white t-shirts. Let's take a minute. Like, let's get it done. <laughs> so I'm already moving in that energy like yeah. this is right now. But, you know, my daughter said like, yo, do we have to be perfect all the time? I'm like, fuck no, no, mm. my bad. I'm sorry that I had portrayed that. And I know that I had lived that way for many reasons that narrative played out for me because again, I'm trying to prove that I, I'm supposed to be here. Yeah. You gotta so be perfect, literally. You have to be perfect. And if I if I'm not gonna be perfect, say the fuck out the way. Yeah. Be unseen, be unnoticed. Mm. Kinda, you know, take a back seat to a lot of things. So which is why now it's crazy that I'm taking the front seat. People are like, who she thinks she is. <laughs> she arrogant. She we thought she was in the back seat. Right. Why she think she must be in the front seat? She on the car? Hold up. <laughs> <laughs> Bruh, what? Saying it all. <laughs> but listen, that's this is that journey because there's so many people out here who have experienced that. And I got put in front of so many people who was experiencing that and I never understood it. I'm like, I can't help these people. I never went through this. And I was the, the conduit. I was the connector. I was the thing that showed all those things. Like, y'all are not separate. You know what I mean? And you're going to be in a better position if you're strong because you're going to be so much more mightier when y'all come together. You can only be so strong. You can only get so far alone. You know what I mean? That's one of the lessons I feel like I carry with me in this world because everything for me was a, 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 a leap of faith. My first tattoo was a leap of faith. And then I got one. I was like, I could do anything. But then when I was in corporate America, all of my tattoos could be covered up. So I used to be in the mirror naked, like, nah, go put a shirt on. You want to hide your shit? You ain't, you ain't real, dude. So getting a tattoo on my hand was like a rite of passage. It, it showed me, like, fuck the system. Fuck fuck what they talking about. Fuck professionalism. And your hair's got to be combed over and shirt tucked in. I ain't never going to have my hair done. I'm going to wear 5X tees. I'm a look at these all my. And then the world happens. We realize we don't have to take on so many of these battles. Because I remember I went into um, Gingy Go one day and the dude had a face tag. I said, oh, the world has changed. Amen. I said, they don't care about my little hands. That Bro had a whole side of his at the register. Like, have a good day, son. I said, oh, the world has changed. <laughs> yeah, 
bro. I'm thinking I'm fighting this bigger fight. You feel me? I think I'm fighting this um, bigger fight. It's homies out there. They really on that fight. I forgot I was supposed to be, some, be going somewhere soon. My mama called him. Oh, look. So we're going to wrap up right there then because it's been a great show. We're an hour and a half in, too. This is some great content. Y'all listen. Y'all have the tools to release. And now that y'all are on the mission to release, what's going to happen is things are start coming up that you got to face. And slowly but surely, you own this, right? You can show up for yourself. Like I told dude last week, be the hero that nobody was for you. Be your own hero. Mm -hmm. Show up for yourself and give yourself a chance. Like give yourself grace too, but there's things that's ailing you and it's holding you back and you hold the master key. And the way that you face those things head on is you just slowly but surely start having a conversation with like, I want to do this more. I don't, I want to do this less or I don't want to entertain this at all. Like I want to X, Y, and Z. Like you can... You have the ability to do that for yourself. So, oh, shit. Sure. That was beautiful. Yeah. I'm going to leave y'all with uh, level yourself. This releasing journey is so you can accept the things that have been out there hovering in your orbit, trying to land, but they don't got no space because you got all these other things that you're hoarding in your life. So release things sometimes just to release things. Let things go and live in a perpetual state of trying new things. That's how you release the old. Like Wally said, you got to replace it with something new. So keep on loving. Love yourselves. We love y'all. Thank y'all for tapping in. Every single Sunday. Y'all see the ticker. Every Sunday, we doing yoga and meditation. We're going to keep it 11 to 1. I like that time. I think that's a good time frame. Um, 11 to 1. Yeah. I'll show you. There it is. Why don't you pay attention to that? So we're going to let y'all know an update on where it's going to be this Sunday. Make sure y'all share this. Make sure y'all follow both our pages and subscribe. Because we're going to get this thing moving and grooving. It's all like popcorn. Yeah, we're going to get it moving popcorn. and grooving. We appreciate y'all. Thank y'all for coming to hang with us. Be easy and love on yourself. And give yourself some grace. Ow. <laughs> all right, y'all. We out. Later.